Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of your fifth favorite podcast, and climbing, the Left yeah. on Red podcast. We used to be your 15th, so. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and here we are, today, still going yep. strong. Um, what's up, Evan? How you doing? Uh, not too bad, Cam. How are you doing? I'm good. As you gathered from our totally natural and real banter there, we are, mm-hmm. as always, your co-hosts, Cam and Evan. Yep. Um... And yeah, coming off of a couple of pretty cool episodes, yep, um, we've had a lot of guests on lately, and we're gonna have some more too. By I the know. way, we're gonna have some more. We've got we've got stuff coming up, stuff in yep. the pipeline. Yeah, I've got uh, some tentative guests lined up for both August and September. Yeah, very cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm still working on my Mongols series. Um, mm-hmm. Spoiler alert: we will not be continuing that today. Uh, it was I've had a lot of stuff going on, but I am writing it, um, and we will be recording. Part yep. four of that next week. So, uh, ideally, fingers crossed, the next episode you hear will be uh, a return to the world of Genghis Khan. Um, and then after that, the return of Mystery Cults. Dude, hell yeah! It's been a while. It's probably been like at least six months since we did one of those, if not longer. It's been. Um, I, I think we did. Yeah, we did one this year. I believe maybe. Yeah. Maybe in like. Uh, January or something like that, but yeah, yeah. I don't know the the the, uh, the fourth one. Not a lot of people listen to it right away, but it's uh, it's caught up now, so yeah. I feel comfortable going going back to it. Hell yeah, yeah, it's a cool series, and it always I always feel like I'm going cross eyed after the episodes. Um, mm-hmm. So those are oh, just wait of, till of the all last the episodes <laughs> of all <laughs> the episodes that we do. Um, those are the ones that I actually probably personally go back and listen to more than once most often um yeah obviously like i do a lot of the editing so i listen to all of our episodes multiple times but once they're published i usually only go back and listen once just to make sure i didn't like fuck up too badly and um but those ones i always end up listening to like multiple times because (laughs) while we're recording them i find it so hard to keep up yeah they're pretty hard history it looks like there's a lot of books that i've been using for them so. Yeah, extremely um, deeply researched. So that'll be cool to dive back mm-hmm. into. Yep. Um, dude, it's hot. It is. That's fucking sweltering, bro. Which is actually, it's we've been lucky because Evan yeah. and I both record upstairs in houses, and you know, old houses old with houses uh, poor with, uh, airflow. Yeah. Yeah. So <sighs> yeah, summertime the is house, sweaty time. Yeah, I believe the house I'm in was built in the 19th century. Yeah, ours was maybe early 20th century, but it's old. You know? Yeah. Our basement's a dungeon. Yeah. Uh, but so because it's so hot, that's actually that's a good segue because uh, we have an advertisement for you guys today, which it's been a little while since we've had one of those. Um, yeah. And this one specifically addresses your hot weather needs. Needs, yeah. So I figure before we start the show in earnest. Um, Let's start the ad. We, why don't we start the ad? So today's episode of Left Unread is brought to you by Dan Gellows and Fellows Family Restaurants. Dan Gellows has always been your go-to for casual family dining, with a mouth-watering selection of classic favorites like the Big Meaty Boy and the Seafood Slop and Trough, which is still unbelievably just $9.99. Mm-hmm. Well now, with a record-breaking heat wave hitting the planet, they're entering the world of delicious frozen dessert beverages. I'm trying That's right, folks. For a limited time only, brand new Frozen Fellow milkshakes are making their way to your local Dan Gellows and Fellows location. Beat the heat with an exciting array of proprietary experimental flavors like pine resin, garlicky hummus, and cum. (laughs) Dude, I knew I was going to fucking lose it. Oh, I do. I practiced this so many times, but I was like, "This is gonna get such a laugh at Evan." Uh, I knew it. All right, like pine resin, garlicky hummus, and cum. As with all their recipes, all ingredients are prepared fresh to order in house for your enjoyment, and that's a Dan Gallo's guarantee. Oh, and the milkshake machine will never just be broken on the hottest day in recorded human history. No. Hint, 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 wink, wink. Also, rest assured, unlike some of their competitors, Dan Gellows will never resort to creepy mascots or gimmicky viral marketing campaigns to convince you to try their frozen fellow milkshakes. And nothing ambiguously horrifying will befall you if you decide to indulge. Heck, 
Evan and I are about to enjoy a couple of frozen fellows right now. Mm-hmm. I got the horseradish flavor. Evan, yep. what did you get? Oh, well, I just took a nice big sip of the um, the surf and surf, uh, which you get to pick your own your own two fish. <laughs> fish. So for my surf and surf, I went with the monkfish and clams casino combination. Oh, nice. It's um, it's got this really out of it, this interesting uh interesting texture mm-hmm. uh to go with the, a rich creamy flavor very nice how i like it yeah heck yeah. yeah uh well you heard it here first folks get out there and try yourself a frozen fellow uh dan gellows and fellows it'll be our little secret Frozen Fellows milkshakes available for a limited time at participating Den Gellows and Fellows locations. This ad does not serve as a guarantee that our milkshake machines will not be broken at the time of purchase. Terms and conditions may apply. All right, well, fuck yeah, man. We've got uh, we've got these free milkshakes. Um, mm-hmm. I know you already tried yours. I'm I'm gonna fucking rip into mine and try mine. Get this horseradish mm-hmm. going. Cheers. Cheers, bud. Oh yeah. Oh. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's spicy. Mm, a chunk that's, of clam. Nice. That is a ref- that is a refreshingly zesty milkshake yeah oh wow not bad at all no it's very good i feel i feel good Fuck. Oh, 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 fuck. How did we get to... Where are we? Huh? Who's there? Hello? Hello? Uh, oh, oh, please. No, 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 no!
<laughs> dude, I'm not kidding. So I was fucking, I was fucking, <laughs> like, I wrote that, and I, I was like, man, the pacing of this and the timing of this is good. Like, this is funny. I was like, yeah. all right. I was like, so I know, I know that I'm gonna get a laugh out of Evan, and so I was like, I really wanted to not laugh myself. I really wanted to like power through. Um, and I failed. I just like couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy. I, it's funny too because I almost took a sip of my water while yeah. you were doing that, and it would have ended up all over my microphone. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that didn't happen. Also, yeah. Uh, um. So anyway, uh, welcome to the show. And welcome. there's a lot of uh, stuff going on to talk about in the world. Yeah, a few things have happened. In the last few days. Folks, some things have gone down. Yeah. And some things are up and yet have yet Speaking to drop. Speaking of up, the temperature. So that's yeah. the first thing I wanted to talk about today. Yeah. We mentioned it a little bit in our advertisement. Um, but it's the hottest few days, yep. apparently, globally. <laughs> uh, uh, July 3rd and then July 4th were back-to-back the hottest days ever. And I think today is, 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 is also. Yeah. Yeah, we're up over 17 It's three days in a row of yeah. the hottest... We're on a streak. The hottest three days uh, ever in, in recorded modern human history. Yeah. Um, obviously, that we can't you know say that how far that goes back. It's not that far, but it's pretty significant. And it's yeah, hot. I'm sure, during, uh, I'm sure during like the Precambrian period, there were some hotter parts. You know, I mean, yeah, the Earth used volcanic. to literally be a ball of molten rock. So <laughs> yeah. I'm so sure probably, in those days, it's probably it pretty was hot. pretty hot. Pretty toasty. Old Cam and Evan wouldn't have been podcasting upstairs back then. No, back then <laughs> we would have had to do it downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> the downstairs um, mix-up. Yeah. Uh, but so, yeah, it's man, it's hot. And, uh, you know, I think we've been kind of spared for... Actually, I mean, I don't know what... I'm assuming that you've had fairly similar weather to us, even though where you live because of your proximity to the Cape and where you are, you do actually get fairly different weather than me a lot of the time, but like, yep. it's been pretty gross and rainy and kind of cool the At last this, month, yeah. but... Yeah, so it, 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 it lags, so, you know, where I live it lags behind both getting colder in, in the fall and hotter in like the spring, mm-hmm. uh, from where Cam is, just for our listeners, but I actually work up north of Providence, uh, so that's Generally speaking, that's the exact same weather as you have. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so definitely, like during the spring, there's like a ten degree difference between where I work and where I live. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at this point, it's been warm for long enough that like it's usually only like five. So it's it's fu- it's fucking brutal. It was uh, my car was reading over a hundred when I got out of work today at yep. two thirty. Yep. And then I got to the gym around three thirty, left at five, and it was still reading about a hundred degrees. So, yeah, I was driving around. And I was reading high nineties uh, a couple hours ago. I, I went to the market, mm. and same thing. It was yeah, it's it's, it's been gross. So we got kind of lulled into a false sense of security, and obviously here, people that live near us on the e- northeastern coast of the United States might be saying, "What do you mean hottest days ever?" Well, it's not here. It hasn't been the hottest days ever here. Well, it's been globally, hotter than it usually is here. Not the last few years, I suppose, but... Yeah, yeah, no, the last so. few years has been pretty cool, but... Um, no, no, I, I'm saying the last few years has also been hot. Like, so what I'm saying is, like, right now, historic, like, if you look at, like, the data from, like, 20 years or 30 years, it's definitely hotter here than it used to be. Yeah. But. Well, but still, I mean, here, we've had a lot of days in the 70s. Like, yeah. it hasn't been hot where I live, is what I'm saying. It's been rainy and in the 70s. It's been very yeah. humid. Um, but yeah, for, for the bulk of June and, and early July, it actually hasn't been. Hot. Yeah. It's been lagging the last few years. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. But now all of a sudden it's, so my point is just to say it's, we're talking about globally here, global averages way up, way up now folks, you know, this has never been our biggest crusading point, but I think at this point, suffice it to say, um, we're making the earth hotter. And it's really hot. It's getting really hot, and it's getting like yeah. noticeable year to year, which is pretty. Well, alarming. it's dangerous too because you're seeing like mass die off, a uh, mass die off of like fish and like certain bodies of water. Which yeah. uh, one thing that happens is um, the dissolved oxygen content uh, goes down as temperature goes up. <laughs> so uh, there's starting to be less oxygen in the water for right, fish. You're getting to... bigger like de- dead zones. Is that what they call them? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, well, I mean, like, well, I forget where it was. I think this was uh, near, like, Baja, California or something like that. Don't quote me. Yes, uh, yeah. And the, but there uh, was, like, mass die-off of fish in the body of water. Yeah, like thousands, like, hundreds like, of like thousands. Like, tens of hundreds of thousands. Because there's just not enough dissolved oxygen. Yeah, they just were all washing up on shore. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I saw I saw something about that. Um, yeah. Where was that mass fish die-off? I think, I think it was Baja, California or somewhere around there. Could be wrong. Oh, it was on the Gulf Coast, so it's, it's Texas. Oh, Gulf Coast. Okay, other the side. The Gulf of Go. Mexico. Yeah. So the yeah. Uh, the other the other uh, other side. Other side. But um, yeah, still, it was it was it was pretty pretty crazy. And so shit like that keeps happening. And um, I don't know. I, I don't really know what else to say about it at this point. I think all people that are way more established than us have been screaming about this for years. So I, I don't really know per se what. Evan and I are going to say on our little show that's going to convince anyone who's not already convinced that this situation. Well, I mean, yeah, it's one of those things. Yeah. But <laughs> like, you know, whatever. Just a thing to note that right now, as we're recording this, we are we're hitting a hot streak, literally, and it's yeah. it's just, that's just that. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I actually just today, um, I was like, uh, I was like on Twitter, just talking to like one of my mutuals, and, you know, just like shooting the shit, whatever. I mentioned, like, I don't know, that wet bulb shit, and I was just like, yeah, I refuse to learn what wet bulb means. Um, and, like, people today are, like, m- mad at me, and, like, some quote tweet, and, like, saying, <laughs> I don't care about, uh, like, well, yeah, if you have AC and everything taken care of, it's not a problem for you. But for other people, it's like, yeah, I don't need a new term for when it's so hot that you can die. Yeah. <laughs> like, I did, like, I'm aware that that's a thing. Yeah. Like, uh, it was very, very stupid. Yeah, man. I forgot I had headphones on. I just tried to put on a hat as I was listening. To that. <laughs> it's it's a good it, luck. I just went with it, but yeah. I'm sure it looks pretty stupid. They look very um, stupid. Yeah, man. I don't know. The internet's fucked. Like people are yeah. just on the prowl looking for reasons to 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 cannibalize one one another all the time. Yeah. Oh, speaking of awful things in the internet, uh, the launch of Threads has happened. Yeah. And we're working on it, folks. We'll be on there i guess yeah certainly <laughs> uh, yeah i'm gonna make one for our for our uh, podcast account i don't yeah. really plan to use one personally um just because i don't know i don't need my um normal friends and family to see <laughs> the kind of shit that goes i know well, on that's the Twitter thing that's what i was thinking like because immediately it makes your stuff available for like your your regular <laughs> friends and shit on instagram yeah. to like add you so i was fucking around with it today just like see what's good but um, don't go looking for me. You won't find yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, there's so no first po- of all, there's, there's no podcast. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thread if you're, if we'll you're, do it. We'll do it. Yeah, if you're looking for um, the savior to you know the collapsing Twitter of Elon Musk, uh, I don't think Mark Zuckerberg, the, the guy who who did the metaverse, is gonna be the one to save no. it. Well, that's Which, the thing. People are all of a sudden like doing an about face on Zuck, like he's not also fucked. Yeah. I mean, he's he's not stupid like Elon Musk. Yeah, he's no, so yeah, he's not. Dude. He's not like a bra- like a brainless dullard like Elon Musk. Yeah, no, is. he's still an alien. I mean, yeah, he's I, an alien. They were talking just, about having a fight. Remember that? Like a couple weeks. Yeah, ago? Yeah, he actually and then, does jujitsu. BJJ. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, if Zuck is like looking pretty yoked, dude. I feel like. Yeah. I feel. Like, I mean, he looks and again. Elon he looks Musk like a cyborg, is like. But. Elon Musk looks like an overstuffed sausage roll. Yeah, you know I what I mean. Like Zuck is younger. If he's not younger, he looks ten years younger. I, I think. Know. Yeah, I think he's about ten years younger. Um, it would be sick to watch like a, a guy I hate just fuck the shit. Like, f- fuck. I was gonna say fuck the shit out of <laughs> like yeah. another guy that I hate more. Um, that would also be sick, dude. If they want to, <laughs> yeah, dude. You, dude see if who they gets just to like successfully mount the other and penetrate. Dude, him. if they just suck and fuck like freaks, dude, I would pay so much money to watch that. An intracural fucking. Oh, not intracural, dude. I would want that shit to be hardcore penetration oh, between Zuck and Musk, dude. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that like that would be fine if that happened. Okay. Um. Yep. And uh. Yeah. So it's hot. And yeah. and it would be sick if Mark Zuckerberg fucked Elon Musk on live <laughs> Dude, TV. Yeah. And he just yeah. lubes up with a bunch of fucking sweet baby rays. Yeah, and, and Elon's <laughs> just like, hey, they squeal like a pig, boy. <laughs> you better suck off that barbecue sauce, fella. Um, <laughs> uh, Post fact disclaimer: this show contains discussion of sexual violence. Uh, 
some <laughs> listeners may find disturbing. Not yeah, we're gonna put a uh, uh, postscript content warning. Not, not recommended for listeners. Uh, yeah, under the under the age of seventeen and over the age of thirty five. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, this podcast is not recommended for any age group. This podcast is not recommended. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, so the other thing that's happening, like, like, kind of as we are recording over the past day, day and a half. So, obviously, you know, a lot of you have probably listened by now. And if you haven't, go back and listen because it was really fun. Um, our episode last week with Dr. Alexander Herbert, um, one of our – either our earliest guests or one of our earliest – not our earliest, but one of our earliest guests. He was uh, um, yeah, the, the – uh, I guess third guest, you know, yeah. Patrick and Ian. Oh, Patrick and Ian are kind of a team. They count as there, one so. guest. Yeah, I think they're tied for first. Pa- yeah, so I guess he yeah. would be our third because that's how you do that. They're tied for first, and he's our third. Um, well, yeah, they've been on. They've all been on three times. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so we talked last week about, um, among other things, about the unfolding situation in Russia regarding the Wagner Group. Um, yeah. And it's it's uh, esteemed leader Yevgeny Prigozhin, um, and I know we mentioned in that episode that the the plan at the time at the time of recording, uh, it was stated that uh, Prigozhin and his uh, those members of Wagner that were directly involved in his coup attempt or invasion or posturing or whatever you want to call it. Um, had been diverted to Belarus and they'd be moving there and signing some sort of defense contract there, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, fast forward to, I think, yesterday, uh, and the president of Belarus, who's been the president for a very long time, uh, Alexander Lukashenko, yeah, has come out Lukashenko. and said, uh, I, don't, I don't know where he is, but he's not here. Uh, he never came here. He didn't arrive here. Um and I know that months ago, Lukashenko was going on and on and on about how much he loved Yevgeny Prigozhin. They'd been friends for 20 years, yada, yada. Um, now he's backtracking. He's like, I don't, even, I don't even know him that well. I mean, really, it's Putin that knows him. They've been friends for like 30 years, so I don't even really know the guy. And he's like, hey, you know, if he decides that he wants to come to Belarus, like, we'll talk for sure. But, yeah, I don't Things know anything about that. A little iffy. I don't know anything about that. So... He was saying that he thinks that Prigozhin is in St. Petersburg right now, or if he's not there, he's maybe leaving and moving around. But they think he's in Russia still. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's just a little postscript addendum to, you know, what we were talking about last week. It's still headline-grabbing news. Um, And the thing about that is there's also just some some stuff coming out about, like, what prompted the – uh, attempted coup, um, and I don't know how much we went into this last week. Um, yeah. Some of this has been bandied about, but I think Lukashenko is sort of uh, corroborating the fact that Prigozhin, um, the 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 main issue arose, or the final straw arose for the Wagner Group with relations with Putin, uh, when Putin wanted Wagner to sign a contract uh, providing, you know service to the Russian military for a set term. Um, yeah. And Prigozhin did not want to do that. Um, and we sort of talked about that last week about like, yeah. when you're used to that warlord lifestyle, somebody comes in and has all these rules and wants you to like salute and all this stuff. It's like, I don't know, man. And also like be under fire from like a modern air force. Yeah. Instead of, <laughs> like, instead of just like, I feel like that, that's shit. also a big thing too. Like, yeah, you know, you've kind of seen that too. Like with the Americans that have gone to fought and, uh, in Ukraine, yeah, who like were used to fighting Afghanistan and Iraq, yeah, which you know, no smoke against those nations, but those aren't like modern militaries like yeah. Russia's, in. yeah. And then they go there and they come back and like, what the fuck, yeah, like that is not like the fucking fighting that we're used to, man. You're under fucking constant fire, totally, yeah. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's like the difference between, you like, know, um, it's like the difference between, I think I used the example last week of, like, you know, Great Britain fighting the Zulu War and then Great Britain fighting Napoleon, you know? Yeah. It's just different. Now, granted, that was kind of a bad example because they did ultimately 
with a coalition of nations defeat our brave boy napoleon which sad day for world history but yeah very sad day although napoleon still did defeat those coalitions like six times yeah no i know it's funny <laughs> it's like, like they like, just kept coming back it's it's, it's yeah it's, it's, there's only so many times you as one country yeah making other countries help you that you can defeat basically the rest of europe yeah it's it's, it's the fact that he did it more than once and not just once, but what was it, six or seven times he won? I forget. Yeah, what. I think it was seven. Was he he, yeah. he had a, a pretty sterling record. But, yeah, I mean, the, the armies of seven nations or six nations can replenish their ranks much faster than one French army. Yeah. So, it's it's I mean, it's like the American Civil War, you know? The South fucking murked on the North, like, just substantially for, like, two years, but they just didn't have the manpower. Yeah. And the North just kept finding more boys to send down there into the meat grinder. Or it's like Carthage versus Rome. Yeah, dude. Exactly. You and know? When, when you can levy those troops nonstop, like, yeah. there's only so long that you can defeat them. Yeah. Even if you have, like, all of the tactical advantages. Yeah, Rome's the classic all. example of that. They yeah. just could just keep the army The doom stacks will, will continue yeah. until morale uh, uh, fades, I guess, of the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> until um, morale disappears yeah so anyway uh where were we we were talking about yeah. uh wagner and Perdition. the master of disguise yeah oh Perdition. dude and yeah you sent me those pictures that he loves <laughs> the dressing up one. Like, oh my god he loves just yeah he dressed up like uh aladdin general the, aladdin or yeah or, from, is it general or is it like field um, what is it? i think he calls himself general aladdin yeah from the dictator i never really finished that movie i mean it's not good yeah it's not a good flick and especially after how, like Borat was so good, and then Bruno was okay, and then his scripted movies aren't good. The the Ali G movie is not good. Yeah, Borat's great, Bruno's great, Borat two's pretty good, but Aladdin's bad. Yeah, uh, his show on Showtime was really funny. That was very good, and that was like what four years ago at this point, five years ago. Yeah, I think it was like twenty seventeen. So yeah, that sense. was that was really good. Um. Anyway, I digress. We don't know where yeah. he's at. He's but yeah, so somewhere. but yeah, so uh, for what we just said, uh, Prigozhin apparently was a man of many disguises, and the pictures are so fucking good. You have to just like look up Prigozhin's disguises. Like these are the silliest outfits I've ever seen. Oh yeah, they're they're so bad. And like, <laughs> if you're anywhere within twenty feet of the guy, you're just like, that's fake beard. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a wig. Like yeah, there's no. I mean, way. it's like barely even holding onto his skin. The beard. Yeah, I mean, he must. It must just be for like snipers or something. Like he's worried about people or, or him maybe far, he's yeah. some kind of uh, wig pervert. Yeah, he might be some sort of strange sex pervert. Which you know, yeah. no kink shame, but like that's no. a really funny specific. Yeah, yeah, that you look like to look like to look like a silly man with a beard. Yeah, like you're really he. Ha in one of them, he like had like this wig on that made him look like he was like a Madchester dude. Like he was really yeah. like he was. I don't know. They're incredible. Yeah. Yeah, like they're he was in good. Blur or something, you know? Yeah, they're um, all good. Really, really funny. Really funny shit. Yeah. The whole situation is, is fucked, but he just seems like such a character. I'm surprised he wasn't more well-known internationally prior to this event, especially considering how bad he was at disguises. Yeah. Que palavras lindas, mas ainda tem uma coisa que eu não entendi Qual é? Afinal O peixe que tu tá vendendo Qual é? Afinal O peixe que tu tá vendendo Tudo lindo, realmente tô emocionado Mas ainda tem uma coisa que eu não entendi Uma duvidazinha assim Detalhezinho aqui Pode parecer bobagem Mas tô achando que não é Mas tô achando que não é Afinal, o peixe que tu tá vendendo Qual é, afinal, o peixe que tu tá vendendo Qual é o cheiro das tuas ideias Qual é o gosto que tu traz no peito E por trás do peixe que tu tá vendendo Qual é o peixe que tu tá vendendo What else? Oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to talk about Which was we, you know, we did an episode a couple weeks ago, similar to this, kind of a forum episode, yeah. uh, where we were talking about the, the Titanic sub, the Ocean Gate Titan submersible. <coughs> uh, um, yeah. And 
are there have like, been a few developments there boaters. um for a while uh <clears throat> ocean gate was was saying that they planned to resume tourist operations in 2024 um, yeah. Now, my guess was that something, or at least part of that, had to do with uh, trying to recoup the the inevitable brutal legal costs that are just going to fucking yeah. destroy that company, um, which should happen. But uh, they have now officially come out and, and said, um, hold on, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Um, so the, the CEO, obviously, of, of OceanGate, Stockton Rush, who we mentioned uh, in memoriam. Um, in an yep. episode a couple weeks ago, who was 61. He died alongside with all the other passengers. Um, a good but CEO the, goes down with the sub. <laughs> um, but now the owner of the company, whose name should be right here. Oh, okay. Uh, Argentinian entrepreneur Guillermo Sonline. Um huh. Which almost oh, sounds okay. like Le- oh, let's think about that name for I a know, second. I know, I know. He's Argentinian, <laughs> and his last name is super German. <laughs> I, knew that, I knew that would prick your fucking ears up. Right? Yep. Uh, uh, uh-oh. 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 Oh, no. How far does that family go back? I know. Maybe How long have you guys been in Argentina? 1946? <laughs> <laughs> you ever wonder about Giselle Bunchen? Oh, oh, yes, I do, yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. hot, though. She's good looking, though. Yeah, she is, but that is a very uh, a very sus name. Yeah, for a any Brazilian. T- any place you're, anytime you're in that region of the world, and you've got a, a German sounding name. Yeah, the east. If you're in Eastern South America, and, highly uh, suspicious. Yeah, and then in the western parts, the Japanese, Eastern German, Western Japanese. You know, like our like our friends the Fujimoris. Yep. 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 Yeah. Um. So anyway, uh, he came out, Guillermo Sonline, which sort of sounds like you're saying Guillermo's online. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that was, uh, that was uh, one of those, uh, you know, Netscape competitors in the 90s. Mm. Guillermo's online. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, he has come forward and said that they're, they're ceasing all operations, both exploratory and touristic. Yeah, uh, I, I, so. I think... Th- I think everybody else may have decided that for them yeah yeah yeah. but i think they're just they're just they're finally getting with the times and they're just yeah. saying hey you're right we're gonna not do this because this seems like a bad idea yeah so maybe they were just trying to salvage their stocks before they sold a bunch of shit i don't i don't fucking yeah I, I yeah I, i'm assuming it was something some trying to buy time like legally and whatnot yeah um yeah Damn, dude! I yeah. feel like I'm gonna have a stroke. It's hot as <laughs> shit right now. I feel like yeah. like my brain feels like mush. I'm cooking. Yeah, yeah. It, it's really bad too because I fucking I lost my goddamn. Uh, so uh, for our listeners at home, I have asthma, and uh, I lost my inhaler the other day. I have no idea where the fuck it is. Um, but like it was like pretty new. I only had it for like a month or two, and it's really a hassle to get them. If you like, just lost one because I I don't know what it is. Maybe uh, maybe it's just the company around here, or the you know the, the health care around here. Yeah. But they don't like to give you them more than three a year, and if you have more than that, they like uh, they, uh, they just get weird about it. So I just lost one that had like three quarters of its puffs on it, and I was just. Gonna you mean the, like fucking... the inhaler itself or the cartridge? Well, they, they, you get it all in one. They, oh, they you don't reload the, the cartridge into the inhaler? No, no, no. They give you a new one. But, like, I don't know. They try to say that, like, uh, if you're using more than three a year, that you have, like, uncontrolled fucking uh, uh, asthma and that you need different types of inhalers and shit. I'm sure it's just to try to fucking sell you shit. Um, but, like, so I just lost one. I had, like, three quarters of them on. And this hot, humid weather definitely makes it worse. Yeah. And so, like, thankfully, I had a couple emergency ones with, like, you know, like, 30 charges between them. But, like, I'm scrounging while I'm trying to, like, get a fucking new one right now. It's a pain in the goddamn ass. Dude, that it's sucks. Like, yeah, it's uh, insane. It's, like, especially because, like, I got asthma because I had pneumonia, and then I got COVID after that. And those two things double-tapped my lungs, like, pretty bad. So I was fucking using it a lot a few months ago. Mm-hmm. And, like, I had to, like, tell my doctor, I was like, why am I being a hassle for this? I just had fucking COVID. Yeah, man, I've been using my inhaler a lot. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. But finally, I was able to, you know, fucking uh, get a new one. But then I just got this one, like, a month and a half ago. Now it's going to be a pain in the ass to get. Anyway. That sucks, man. Yeah. Yeah, but, um... 
Uh, yeah. So, do you have uh, did you have any other topics? No, those are the three main things I wanted to talk about. Um, plus, you know, I just wanted to read our advertisement and get some revenue because we're poor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, you know what I want to talk about? What's that? The summer blockbusters that are out this month. Oh yeah, hell yeah, man! Lots of good movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the big three this month: Mission Impossible Seven, Dead Reckoning Part One, mm-hmm. uh, Oppenheimer, and Barbie. Mm-hmm. And now I wanted, uh, I wanted us to kind of, uh, you know, we can talk about it. I want to rank between the two of us which ones we're most excited for. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, first off, you know, we've got Mission Impossible. Which is the seventh edition into the Mission Impossible film series, mm-hmm. uh, which of course the film series are a sequel to both television series. The first one from the sixties and seventies, and the second one from the eighties, uh, which I've never watched and will never watch. Um, and then we've got you know the film series that starts in the ninety in the nineties uh, with Mission Impossible one, two, and three, uh, which I've seen. I haven't, and I haven't. I I've just started watching them last week, trying to get ready for this. Um, and then we've got, uh, uh, four, five, and six, which are supposed to be like God tier. Mm -hmm. So now I just finished three literally right before we started recording this. Have you seen the Mission Impossible movies? Uh, I've definitely seen the first two and uh, and maybe the third one, like when that came out, which was over 10 years ago at this point. Um, that's it. And I, I, I remember that Tom Cruise had long hair and rode a motorcycle in the second one. Yep. And right. that there was a some sort of bioweapon called Chimera. Yep. And was 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 the love interest in that? Um It's Thandy Newton. Oh, it was Thandy Newton. I was gonna say I thought in my memory it was uh it was uh what was her name? Um she was an actress that was in all sorts of movies. Uh she was in that movie, A Knight's Tale. Uh, oh, you with... think of Michelle Monaghan because she's no, in I'm I'm not. I'm thinking of Shannon Sossamon, but that's she was that's it was Thandie Newton. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thandy Newton is the one from a uh, two or Tondi. I don't know how you pronounce it. Oh, yeah, I think it's, it's Tondi. Tan- it's, Tandi- Tandi- it's actually apparently Tondi way. Oh. Well, yeah. that's that's her. I think that she came out and said that's how she. That's her actual name. Yeah, I've always said Thondi. Yeah, which apparently her, her real name, be, her real first name is Melanie. Yeah, and apparently she did used to get credited as Tondi, mm-hmm. but spelled Thondi, so maybe that's why. Um, yeah, um, but yeah, that one's great. So that's a super horny movie. It's very funny. Uh, Mission Impossible Two. So Mission, the first Mission Impossible is an awesome movie. Uh, it's a very good one. The it's first got a uh, yeah. The first one's very good. Uh, it's got um. Uh, it's good, like in a campy way, but still, it's really good. Like the 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 big action sequence at the end, where like a fucking helicopter gets attached to a train and goes under a fucking tunnel with the train. It's so ridiculous, but it's very cool. Uh, and you know, you you've got a John Voight who actually like kind of jogs at one point in that movie, which is really insane. Watching to him see. run. Yeah, oh, it was not. He's not running. Okay, but he he's breaking into a a trot. A canter. Yeah, yeah, I can't, yeah. And that's, like, really crazy to see. Um, but, yeah, you, you've got that one. The second one is bad, but, like, wicked funny. And uh, it's by John Woo. And the movie is is just, like, insane. Uh, super horny. Uh, very horny for Tondiwe Newton. Um, and uh, it's got, like you said, yeah, it's got Tom Cruise with long hair. It's a very 90s movie. Like, it's a very 1999 movie. Is that when it came out in 99? It came out in 2000, but okay. it would be filmed in 99. Sure. You know, and it's very 1999. Like, you've got, like, the Matrix sunglasses on yeah. Tom Cruise. Yep. Um, it's got, like, this super fucking hammed up motorcycle chase scene at the end. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at the movies right now. And know. just, like, an insane amount of bicycle and drop kicks by Tom Cruise in the final fight. Like, he was just kicking the shit out of this guy in the most ridiculous ways. <laughs> Um, and then the third one is J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams always needs to get his hands into an iconic series. Um, and much like uh, his uh, forays into Star Wars and Star Trek, uh, generally speaking, his first movie 
in a classic series is pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, I liked The Force Awakens. I know it's basically A New Hope, but I liked it. Um, and I like his Star Trek movie, the first one. Uh, those are both good. Of course, uh, his, uh, of course, The Rise of Skywalker and Star Trek Into Darkness are like such dog shit. It's unbelievable. Hmm. Just like bottom of the barrel bad. Yeah. Uh, I think we've talked about my my Star Trek Into Darkness. We have. We've here. talked about it in con and all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but luckily, he only does one movie in the series, and his like the like his other first movies in the other series, pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then uh, so I'm excited to start to watch Ghost uh, uh, Ghost Protocol this weekend, um, and then you know, maybe, maybe I'll even tackle uh, uh, what's the next one, Rogue Nation, mm-hmm. and then there's Fallout, which is the the one that has an insane, practically shot scene of. Tom Cruise and Tom Cruise actually doing it, climbing the Burj Scott. Khalifa. No, I think that I think that's Ghost Protocol. Oh, okay, because uh, he really no, did this, the Burj Khalifa too. Yeah, no. So in Fallout, and I've I've watched like a like behind the scenes thing on it. Tom Cruise leaps from outer space. Oh, that's right. On and the it's Red Bull sh- thing. shot practical. Yeah, and the entire time he can only move up to like ten feet away from the camera guy. And now the one not practical part of that movie is that the other person in the air gets hit by lightning, and then Tom Cruise has to do, like, compression, like, chest compressions on them in the air. Yeah. And he said that they could only do one take a day to get this. And so, like, for, like, every day they would go up into fucking space and he would leap from it. <laughs> yeah, like, just, just, just at the edge of the atmosphere, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dude, that is so fucking insane. Because otherwise he would float away. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you haven't achieved orbit yet. You know what I mean? Dude, Tom, say what you will, but Tom has done so much with the power of Scientology. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he... Uh, like he buys he into that shit. Well, yeah, I mean, it's done wonders for his career. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I, I get it for, like... Like, if you're, like, a struggling actor or whatever, and the Scientologist is like, yeah, you just have to give us all the blackmail possible on us, and we'll get you fucking parts. We'll yeah. turn you into a star. Right. Like, I, I guess I get it. I wouldn't fucking do it, but I can, <laughs> see the, I can see the thought process. Yeah, well, to be fair, neither of us are really, like, fertile ground for that sort of nefarious plotting anyway. Yeah. I don't think they'd make that offer to either of us, but Tom... Well, it depends. I mean, you know what I mean? If we were promising actors... Like, now we're both in our, like, mid-30s, but, you know. Early 30s. I think we're still early. 33 is still early. Yeah. I, I Not for me, not too much longer for me. No, I know. You've got, what, two months? Three months? October, three months? Yeah, I'll three and a half. Uh, almost four months. Well, yeah. It's three, yeah, it's almost four, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'll be 34, and then I'll fucking finally just, bloop, just kill myself and be done with it. This is the glorious period where we're the same age, and you can't lord it over me. Yeah, yeah. Like you yep, always exactly. do. Make me feel mm-hmm. like a little baby. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, so I'm really excited for Mission Impossible. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, so Dead, so this new one's going to be called Dead Reckoning. It's yeah. part one. Part two will be out next year, and currently it has a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, which is just the critic score, right? Yeah, yeah, but this is, like, over 100 reviews. This is, yeah. like, it's, it is fucking crushing right now. Yeah. And uh, so I'm really Dude, excited. Dude, he hasn't been missing lately, man. I mean, you saw you saw Yeah, Top this Gun. is like a Tom Cruise renaissance right now. Top Gun was fucking awesome. Dude, yeah, Top Gun Maverick. Like ju- I just accepted the propaganda when I saw yeah. it. I was like, I yeah. know uh, I well, know I'm being propagandized. Rolls. I don't care. Yeah. This fucking owns. <laughs> yeah, that movie was sick. And I was going to say like you, this is this is a time when you will hear us just straight up say that we were fine with the propaganda. It Yeah. Uh, it I accepted ruled, the man. op. I will accept the psyop. Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean, yeah. Between that and the the Mission Impossible resurgence, yeah, this is uh this is like a, a new phase of Tom Cruise's career where he's like a huge star again. Yeah, yeah. He like was after- never like not, you know. He didn't he didn't wane like your Nicolas Cage's and all these other guys. But like, you know, everybody has dips. Yeah, he was he was doing good movies that weren't huge. Like uh, what yeah. uh what, what was Last that one? Samurai? Edge of Tom- yeah. Last Samurai. But what was that one that? We oh, Edge of Tomorrow. Movie that movie night? was sick. Was that Edge of Tomorrow? Was it something yeah, else? It was oh, Edge yeah, it was Edge of Tomorrow. Live, yeah. Die, Repeat. Yeah. Whatever, Edge of Tomorrow. We watched that for like Which was a good movie. movie, good it, movie. It, it was a good movie, but it like it wasn't like this huge like blockbuster. Yeah. You know? Yeah, um, he's 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 so back. 
Yeah. He must have. We are so fucking back, dude. A child to David Miscavige or something. Yeah, yeah. He, or you know, fucking uh, finally ended Shelley Miscavige's life. Yeah, we're totally gonna get killed for making these jokes. He put her, <laughs> he put her out of her misery. We're not famous, yeah. dude. If we're famous, if we get famous enough that we have to get like a cease and desist from the Church of Scientology, I'll consider that a good sign. Yeah, yeah, the cease and desist will be fucking uh, one of the master sins outside our window. Yeah, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep, I'm right, yeah. dude. <laughs> Did it, wasn't one of them like a sexual predator? Uh, he just got convicted of two of the three, um, uh, uh, I guess trigger warning here, we're gonna talk about the Danny Masterson case a little bit, or content warning. Yeah. Uh, Danny Masterson, uh, raped some women, including Cedric Bixler Zavala's wife. Cedric Bixler Zavala. Oh, that's right, he was Volta. a Scientologist, right? And that, He was he, like, a Scientologist, that's where he met his wife, and yeah. then she kind of opened up that Danny Masterson had, like, raped her. And, uh, it's funny, because, uh, Cedric Bixler Zavala credit scientology for like finally getting him over his drug addiction yeah apparently once he got finally got clean from like you know dope and all all the other drugs that they used to do he was smoking a thousand dollars of weed a week which is just like what the fuck like that like you just must be stoned non-stop like that's like smoking more than you can even get high from that's like seth rogan shit yeah like like the like what the fuck and then um so they helped him get over that and then uh, eventually he left, and he said that they, like, fucking killed his dog, that they were, like, st- uh, stalking him and his wife yeah. and shit like that. It was insane. Yeah, the but, testimonials uh, of people that have left the Church of Scientology, especially high-profile yeah. members, are insane. Yeah. You know, the just the shit that, man, what a, what a fascinating... I, it'll be really interesting as, like, a history person uh, yeah. to see what what if anything ever comes to light about like the true goings on of that that group because i mean and then yeah and then like the offshoots of that like we talk about in the son of sam episodes those were scientologists who yes. created the process church and shit yeah like yeah. all that shit like all the stuff that was like tied to them in the 70s and 80s and shit yeah crazy fucking crazy. insane okay but, so um, we got we got to do our you wanted to rank our excitement for well yeah we got to talk about the other two too yeah yeah, so, uh, sorry, we'll be quick about this. I know you're dying from the heat. No, no, I, I mean, it's cool. Uh, just, just um, us in. Next up, we got Oppenheimer, uh, which is the uh, the movie about Oppenheimer being sad that he created a bomb of mass destruction and it got used. Is it about the aftermath, or is it about the, the I, I think it's about the Manhattan Project. Okay. Um, so... Uh, this will be another one that you're gonna have to accept the op (laughs) to enjoy. Uh, obviously, um, I, you know, Christopher Nolan is, uh, I think saying that he is, uh, right wing and a a proponent of the, uh, security state would, uh, not be a a controversial thing to state. Yep. Uh, you know, I mean, straight up, fuck it. I mean, that's like the whole point of the Batman movies. I mean, it's fucking, it's like actually the Patriot Act, you know. If you have a crazy guy like the Joker who's really willing to do terrorist stuff, it's okay to uh, invade everybody's privacy. Yeah. Um, like, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I don't think... I think Christopher Nolan's insanely overrated. Yeah, um, totally. I mean, I, I I think even the Batman movies, like, I've gone yeah. back and rewatched. Honestly, Batman. I like the newest Batman movie more than I like any of them. Yeah, I feel the exact same <laughs> like, way. Dude, I thought the newest Batman movie was incredibly good. I loved good. it. And the second time I watched it, because I think we talked yeah. about that a little bit on the show... Um, but the the second time I watched it, I liked it even more. I think I it's loved it. fantastic. I don't love that Bruce Wayne, but I think that uh, Robert Pattinson is the fucking raddest Batman. Yeah, I felt and really also just fucking, I didn't love his Bruce Wayne. It was very broody and moody. And Colin whatever. Farrell as the Penguin, all with oh actual God, makeup dude. done, dude. No CGI on that. That's fucking makeup. Yeah, man. Hell that, yes. that movie fucking rips. And then and pl- just the opening it, scene when he fucking. Yeah. When he just trucks through those dudes in the train yeah. station, it's oh, the dude, tone. and I it had like that movie. like <laughs> uh, like unlike basically almost any other superhero movie over the last like I don't know fifteen years or whatever. Yeah, it actually had like a uh, uh, like a sense of like actual artistic direction. Yeah, like there were shots where they were taking the camera and slamming it to the side of the Batmobile and yeah. during a crash and it spins out and it's like an inch above the ground and you're seeing the destruction. Yeah, from it like all that yeah, shit it was, was cool. It like was, such it was cool a sick shots. Movie. Yeah, all, I, all that design, I mean, I get it, like the Heath Ledger, Le- Heath Ledger Joker and all that stuff. Yeah, um, still cool, but like even that movie, The Dark Knight, the one that got all the fucking props, it feels pretty pretty flaccid now. Rewatching it, like 
and I don't no. know that that's like a hot take or not. I don't keep up with like the film. You no, know, oh, I, world I, I like would do, I would say Christopher Nolan is not that beloved in like film world. That's he's definitely more of a normie director, yeah. like the normie idea. I did like um, Memento, cool movie. Memento's cool. I actually I I, I I actually really really like Interstellar. I mean, I just love any like space sci fi. I've of still stuff. never seen Interstellar. It's not a good great movie. Uh, I mean, Matthew McConaughey is incredible in it. And it's very yeah, dude, silly. He's, he's another guy who like kind of had the inklings of like a renaissance, and then kind of dropped off the map. Like he's a fabulous actor, and in a span of like he five years, do put out like things. some powerhouse shit, like True Detective, fucking powerhouse shit. Dallas Buyers Club, Dallas Buyers uh, Club, powerhouse shit. Um, yeah. What else and was he in? Wh- and then just kind of like started doing Lincoln commercials and shit, and like yeah, yeah. He just doesn't do a bunch of things right now. I mean, he's gearing up to to enter politics, so there is that. Oh, um, is that the thing? Yeah, and he's also maybe Woody Harrelson's brother, you know. Uh, yeah, that'd be that'd about. be cool. Yeah, but uh, but I mean, like, Interstellar is not what I would call a great movie. It's just like I, as somebody who really loves like I don't know, like space travel and all that kind of stuff. And it's uh, very cheap in how it draws on your emotions, but I find it, myself very emotionally moved by that movie, mm-hmm. even though I know what it's doing and how it's getting there. But I don't know, I, I really like that one, even though I don't think it's great. I really like it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so that one. And Tenet, I find really watchable, even though it's stupid as fucking shit. That is such a stupid fucking movie. Tenet. Mm. Uh, Tenet was horrible. Tenet yeah. Tenet was horrible. But I find it very watchable. Nah, man. I, dude, I <laughs> really? hated that movie. And I very, yeah. it's very rare that I'll have that visceral of a response to yeah. a film. Because I can watch whatever. But, yeah. like, dude, I it's hated fucking Tenet. Stupid. I thought it was so fucking bad. I thought it was so stupid. And it had yeah. a lot of people I like in it. I actually like that lead actor. It's Denzel Washington's kid. Oh, I don't um, like him. I think he can't act for shit. Really? Yeah, John. Denzel I don't know. Washington. I thought he was fine, but he definitely wasn't the reason I hated the movie. Oh, he's very good, like action. It's just like I oh, everything. He's, he's no Denzel. Him in, yeah, he's he's not a very good dramatic actor. He's a very good action guy, though. Yeah, yeah. I think um, he'll be fine. He he's he wasn't distasteful to me. He's not the reason. Well, I, I mean, like he's him. he's not exactly young. No, he's he's, he's like forty. Like 40. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah. So anyway, so we have Oppenheimer, and I think that it's a there. It's supposed to be shot part black and white, part color, and the black and white is supposed to be like I think more subjective things, and the color is supposed to be more like objective or some stupid shit like that that Christopher Nolan likes to do. Um, and it's going to be super long. I think it's like three and a half hours, unfortunately. Um, but it is going to have some awesome IMAX shots of nuclear explosions. Which you know your boy likes, dude. So. That, Evan gets rock hard for footage of nukes, just yeah. so everybody knows. Like, and that's that. I have a DVD all... narrated by William Shatner about all of the proving grounds tests, dude. That that shit fucking predates yeah. a lot of things about Evan. Yeah, Evan has yeah. been fucking since rock like high solid school for nukes for since, like, as long school, as I've yeah. known him. Um, but yeah, I mean, foundational stuff, stuff that you might think. Yep. Man, this is the thing about this guy. Before all that, yeah, jerked off to videos of nukes, like just. Yeah, just I was like into super it. into like uh, yeah all that nuclear shit back when I was in high school. That's why that's the first ever episode of our show. Yeah, actually, yeah, the, yeah. The if you guys go back and that. listen to it. It's it's it, it, it's an homage. It's an homage no. to his passion. So yep. we're gonna go see that movie. Yep. With some buddies, and man, I am so dreading it. I really not dreading it. It'll be fun to hang out <clears> with everybody. <throat> But the actual movie itself, because you know this already. I'm yeah. There are I'm very few three plus to... hour movies that I <clears throat> give a shit to sit through. Yeah, they're they're out there, right? Avatar. Like, I can sit and watch Lord of the yeah. Avatar was sick. I can sit and watch yeah. Lord of the Rings and the special features like that shit rules. But it better be a dope three hours. You know, yeah. The Revenant. I, that was I'm long gonna I'm movie. gonna eat an edible for Oppenheimer. What do you say? Uh, I'll do I'll do like a little five milligram edible or something like that for Op- uh, Oppenheimer. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. I'm gonna have to do something yeah. to make sure that I don't need to piss. Nonstop. Well, so that's the thing, though. It's like, and I, I felt like I was, you know, I wasn't saying any when I was talking about why I don't want to see it. I don't think I was saying anything that was like yeah. lost on you. But I was like, just yeah. like surprised that every that nobody else was like picking up what I was putting down about. Like, this just seems like a big fucking like one of those like Oscar contender movies that gets like made yeah. to contend. Oh, for oh the only like, reason is because like it seemed everybody was down for it. I would still, in a heartbeat, rather see fucking Mission Impossible. Same, <laughs> and I would also Seven, rather see movie th- number three. Yeah, yeah. So movie number three, the big July blockbusters, is 
Barbie. Yeah. Greta Gerwig's Barbie. Uh, finally, uh, it's been in development since 2009, attached to a bunch of different filmmakers and lead actresses. At one point, insanely, uh, Amy Schumer was supposed to star. This was back in 2016 when, like, for, like, two months there, for some reason, people really liked Amy Schumer. Dude, uh, before... I'm not going to be one of these. I, I Just to preface this, I'm not, and Evan is not, we are not those dude podcasters, right? Yeah. There are so many funny women out in the world. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Rosebud sure. Baker, fucking... Uh, uh, no, Sarah Sherman. What do you say? Sarah Sherman. I love Sarah, Sarah Sherman. Sherman. Dude, so many fucking funny women in the world, so I'm not about to make some weird yeah. sexist take about female comedians. Amy Schumer is so fucking aggressively unfunny and has always... She's, she's so been, unfunny, dude. dude I, she's and just like, like hey, okay. your pussy ever fart? And it's like, yeah, dude, sure. And there are lots of... Oh. there. Here, to, to her credit, I guess, that is a genre of like low-hanging fruit douchebag frat boy humor that has yeah. long been perfected by many, many talentless men. I think that her only claim to fame was that she was like what if a lady made those bad jokes and just yeah. ugh, ugh, ugh. What, what if a lady was like andrew dice clay what if a what if a fucking <laughs> like, chick was carlos mencia like just yeah. not ugh, just yeah. bad just bad the sarah Silverman's yeah the, the thing world is like her jokes better. were not good she doesn't she is like a black hole of charisma like no. you know what i mean like, like you and, and you know and, the kind of jokes she would make if you said that too yeah Yes. Well, I've got a black yes. hole. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? It's just like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. You can't make millions making the same fucking jokes that I yeah. would make and get myself fired from work, you know? Yeah, like, when it, yeah exactly. Anyway. It's so fucking stupid. Can you imagine but, uh, her as Barbie? But they ended up making a stellar choice. Yeah, th- there was also uh, Anne Hathaway was attached to it at sure, one point as well. She's fine. Yeah, she would have been great. Um, uh, But yeah, and then it went back into the d- development hell. And then Greta Gerwig uh, came in, and she co-wrote the script with Noah Baumbach, and uh, she's directing it, and it's it looks so fucking funny, dude. The movie looks. And by the way, it's rated PG thirteen, so it's not like a it's not rated like G or PG for like little kids or something like that. Um, Although PG thirteen, I feel like is the new PG. I don't know that PG is like uh, that. Like doesn't happen that much anymore. I feel like I have no idea. I don't watch a lot of PG movies. A lot of movies are PG thirteen though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like PG thirteen has suit like PG. I feel like just doesn't. Well, I also I mean for like adults too, PG thirteen. That's just I think the most common one. Yeah. But um, anyway, it's got a uh, fucking uh, Ryan Gosling looks like he's gonna be so fucking funny in it, dude. The, the have, you heard, so, have said, you heard the the fucking? My job is beach. <laughs> have you heard the? <laughs> have you heard the French controversy about the billboards? No. Okay, so the American billboard for Barbie. And I'm yeah. going to butcher my French here. So the American billboard for Barbie. Oh, I if did you've seen it, this. it's like a picture of Barbie sitting on Ken's shoulders, yeah. and it says like she can do everything. He's just Ken, right? Yeah, but like, which Ken is like, means like you know benign and funny, whatever. And so they translated that literally into French, which is something along the lines of "Elle peut tout faire, faire. lui c'est juste Ken." Not realizing that in in French slang, Ken means like to fuck. Yeah. And so translating to the average French reader, it says she can do anything. He can just fuck. <laughs> you know, it's like, amazing. Dude, so rad. <laughs> yeah. They definitely need to just lean into that because if you yeah. look at the poster, it yeah. just rules. Like, dude, look at this guy. All he does is fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. Oh, dude. And like the shit that fucking Ryan Gosling was saying about it, too. But I think he was even saying that, like, no, Ken doesn't have sex. Like, yeah. he was like, people don't know, people don't know anything about Ken. They don't know how to get into, like, Ken mindset, you know? Yeah. And all this shit. And he's just like, yeah, this movie is for the real Ken cells only. Yeah, dude. dude. <laughs> yeah, he's like, real real fans of Ken understand that Barbie never gave a fuck about Ken. Yeah. <laughs> and Ken doesn't matter, dude. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, it looks so fucking funny. Dude, and, Ken um, sells. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, dude. so, okay. So, I agree that the movie actually looks awesome. I remember seeing the first yeah. trailer, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, I'm going to need to see if my like my sister wants to go see this or something. Yeah. That's, like, a great flick to, to bridge the worlds, right? Like, Because yeah. it, it just looks awesome. I didn't oh, grow up so playing funny. with Barbies, but I I suddenly feel yeah, like a Barbie Yeah, the cast fan. of it is so, like, so many people are in it. Uh, Dua Lipa plays all of the mermaids in it, which is really funny. That's hysterical. <laughs> also, just the idea of Dua Lipa as a mermaid. Like, yeah, you know, oh, I yeah, am dude. still just a caveman, just so everyone knows. Yeah. Um, that's exciting to me. Yeah. 
Um, uh, is yeah, there and, a uh, Mr. Mer- yeah, there, there, are, there are a ton of people in it. Um, and I'm drawing a blank right now because I literally think my brain yeah. is cooking. But I mean, yeah, Margot Robbie is uh, Barbie, a much oh, that's better right. choice than Amy Schumer. Well, she's she's spectacular because she can do she can do comedy. Yeah, and she's got serious chops. She's a great yeah. actress, and I think she's yeah, she can actually at this act. Point. Yep. Um, but she she's can also charisma. be funny. She can pull yep. off funny, and not everyone can. You, a lot of people can do one or the other, but I think she's absolutely the right person for absolutely. it. Plus, I mean, you know, not that this is the most important thing, but we're talking about Barbie, who's like, you know, an icon of a certain look, and like Margot Robbie is that. She's like a, yeah. a sex symbol. She's uh, got the acting chops. She's yeah. I mean, like, just the perfect casting for it. Yep. So, I think we're gonna have the same ranking. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so maybe, I'm thinking maybe we might not actually. Okay, so number one for me is Mission Impossible Seven. So I, I would actually say I'm more excited for Barbie. Wow, just because I think it's something that's so different from a movie I would normally see. So yeah. that kind of makes me excited. But yeah, it's not like it's. I'm also the number two would be Mission Impossible. Number two for me is Barbie. Yeah. But definitely number three and a distant third is Oppenheimer, which yeah. I really, when I say it's that looking I just, like the box office is going to agree uh, with Cameron. Yeah. Uh, it kind of looks like Barbie's track going to be number one. Uh, Mission Impossible 7 2. And kind of in a distant third is looking a bit like Oppenheimer. Well, Barbie, I think, has everything that you need to fucking crush at the box office, which is A, it's yeah. got just this like massive like product tie-in that there there are so many barbie fans who might not necessarily be like greta gerwig fans or like give a shit that it looks like a good movie they're gonna see pretty ascendant right now too so that's big too greta gerwig's pretty ascendant right now she is but she's also i mean i my point is i think that there are a lot of people that are going to see the barbie movie movie who would have seen it whether it looked awesome or not yeah, and then on top of that, there's people like you and me who are like, "All right, yep. this actually looks like it's gonna fucking yeah, exactly. rule." Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might it, not it, it be has, excited. It probably about... had the highest floor. It had yeah. the highest floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, 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 there is a, a concept of a Barbie movie that I would not care to go see. Right. Yeah. So, like, which is the Amy I, Schumer one? Sure, or or the <laughs> Gal Gadot one, or the whatever. Fuck, I, any of that doesn't interest me. This they've they yeah, seem yeah. to have done the thing. 
Yeah. So, um, anyhow. And then, yeah. yeah, definitely Oppenheimer. I think that the odds of that movie convincing me to like it are extremely slim. I tend to not like Christopher Nolan, so, like... Uh, sure. Even even if I find his movies watchable, I I tend to not like them. And then I, um, you know what is going to suck actually is we're going to go see that movie. We're going to come out of it probably both with similar criticisms of it, both saying eh, whatever, like yeah. didn't not the worst thing I've ever seen, but didn't like it, and just get like dunked on for being pretentious. And it's like yeah, no nah, man, I don't think you have to be pretentious. Like because that's the thing, I'm stoked for Barbie. I'm not I'm not pretentious. Yeah, you're not pretentious. Neither one of it. We both fucking like Steven Seagal movies. Like. We're not talking yeah. about two fucking highbrow fucking goons over here. Yeah. Dumb shit can be good, too. Mission Impossible. Two of my was... favorite, yeah, two of my favorite movies ever are Eraserhead and Gondahar. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I like both. Yeah. You know? Dude, Gondahar is sick. So Yeah, um, Gondahar's an all-time flick, dude. Yeah, it's still not 100% sure what's going on in that movie. But, uh... <laughs> no, well, part of that's because I've watched that movie seven times. And all seven times I have been under the influence of uh, psychoactive substances. Yeah. Caffeine. Lots of caffeine, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evan likes to Definitely. get jacked up on uh, on macchiatos. Yeah. Um, Caffeine's and blue chews, baby. I'm with... <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine recreationally taking erectile Recreational pills? boner, dude. Not to masturbate or anything, but yeah. taking them for the rush. This is a business boner, boys. <laughs> It just helps me get hyper focused and yeah. really just gets my hackles. Too out. much blood in my head makes me a little dizzy. I gotta get down there. Speaking of which, um, we should let's wrap this up because yeah. I gotta get out of this room. Or yeah. Oh yeah, I do want to say one more thing um, for all the baseball fans out there. Shohei Otani. That's all I want to say. Oh yeah. Just, has he done it, or do you think? What well, has he done? What been has, like the the greatest baseball player of all time? Like nobody will no, ever. No, I know, do but wasn't there doing? like some like home run race going on? Well, uh, uh, not quite yet, but he is over 30 home runs halfway through the season. So yeah. it would be very hysterical if after MLB treat cheated to uh, uh, throw, you know, uh, 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 juiced balls only at Yankees home games with the majority coming in September during Aaron Judge's fake home run chase and that he beats it, the not real record by one. That if Shohei Otani just comes out and then beats again this year, this will be the cool. I would fucking jerk off until completion the day that that happens. Like as I'm watching it, if that ha- oh my god! Dude. I mean, odds are I'll probably jerk off until completion that day too. No, but uh, while I'm watching, the, the only thing I will watch will be Shohei Otani hitting 64, and I will bust the fattest rope. You have no do idea. Do you think? Do you think it's possible for a non-juiced ball player to to beat the fucking juiced record? Um, that's a lot of homers, dude. Yeah, you know, I also didn't think it would be possible for a player to be both like the best hitter in the league and like a top ten pitcher in the league at the same time. Yeah. So, but that's happening right now. So I'm I just know he's say, a, he's a freak, and I'm not a huge baseball fan like you. But I mean, just, dude, he's putting up Barry Bonds numbers in terms of yeah. uh, value added, all like, while like throwing K's, dude, just throwing heat. Well, in part with that too, well, 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 he's putting up Barry Bonds numbers and like wins above replacement, and it's just like I mean, Barry Bonds is my favorite player ever. And he's he's putting up like dude he's he's just fucking Barry Bonds is your favorite player of all time. Oh hell yeah, bro! Hell really? I just didn't yeah. know that. I'm not. I have no input on it. I just didn't realize. Dude, with the fucking single cross earring, just fucking 650 on base percentage, I, 688 one year, just fucking dude. Oh my! I think God. they should bring Roids back, man. A t- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know they have their own <laughs> like, new shit, but like yeah, I mean they they, they are back. <laughs> yeah, they're I know. There. You know, <laughs> they're fucking like. What do you mean, dude? The, the, everybody's juice that's playing every sport. I know. Like I know, but what I'm saying is they need to bring the fucking crazy shit back. Yeah, that I fucking want some bullshit. fucking That's the they were doing in the 90s and 80s, man. Yeah, dude, the stenozolol and shit. I want those anabolics just fucking dude, making we, dudes ball we need tracks fucking sink to little... We trend freaks. We need fucking... Little, we little need pouch of pebbles back, for a man. ball sack with, like, gigantic biceps with, like, fucking veins popping out. Yeah, Mark The McGuire head getting shit. huge. Jose Canseco Going mega mind mode. What's up? Jose Canseco shit. Mark McGuire Yeah, hell shit. yeah. 
No, dude, Mark McGuire. Yeah, fuck yes, dude. All right. So, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about today? No, no, it's too hot. I need to go. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. Um, sorry, sorry that we're so irritable, and we still made an hour episode. So I, I, I don't know how we do it. Like, we'll go in, and I'll just be like, "There's no fucking way." And then we, Evan and I can just shit out an episode. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, have a great week. Like I said, we'll hopefully be back next week with uh, Mongols Four. Worst case scenario, we'll be back next week with something, but. Uh, my plan is to have, excuse me, that ready. Um, yep. And then, as Evan said, we've got a bunch more cool guest episodes coming up and, and more uh, ancient mysteries and all kinds of cool shit. So yep. stay tuned. Lots uh, of reading for We love us you to dearly. Do. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And stay cool because wherever you are, apparently oh. you're hot right now. Uh, w- one more thing for the new listeners. Uh, we have a playlist on Spotify we do. with all of the interstitial music that we use. Uh, which we update as we we release the episodes. So, if you ever want to know what songs that we've uh, used, they should be mostly in order. Yep. Um, and also, uh, if I mean, they're if not you, there you, yet, you can also yeah. email us. People yeah, yeah. Feel feel free to reach out, and, and we'll answer any questions that you want. We're just we're just two dudes with full time jobs that sometimes forget to update that. So yeah. But yeah, generally speaking, it's called Lu Rippers. Um, and then also. Uh, Speaking of um, Ancient Mysteries and Mongols, um, all of our series are compiled in order on yep. LU Series, which is also a Spotify playlist. And if you're somebody who's bothered by how much our series jump around and the way our workload is spread out, um, we have everything compiled there in order. So if you want to just yep. go through and listen to the series, you know, in the order that they're chronologically in, not the way they're yep. released, by all means, please do. Um, yeah. And we will see you guys next week. All right. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. Estou te esperando Desde que eu nasci Minha vida pro momento Que eu te conheci E o amor que eu guardava Eu guardei pra você Fazer feliz e então volta pro meu lado pra gente curtir numa boa só fazendo o que a gente quis. Volta logo, volta logo, volta. Tantos medos e manias que eu acumulei Quando eu fico do seu lado eu costumo esquecer Vem, volta que eu estou te esperando Desde que eu nasci Minha vida pro momento que eu te conheci E o amor que eu guardava eu guardei pra você E a pessoa que eu sonhava eu vi aparecer E os momentos que tivemos ainda vamos ter As viagens que fizemos e vamos fazer Nos tempos mais difíceis que eu te confortei Se eu chorei você chegou, me confortou também As cervejas do começo a gente se deu bem Brincadeiras com o futuro e quem nós vamos ser E o amor que a gente tem e sempre vamos ter E essa música depois que a gente morreu